Dollar forty four here. And this is a big giant skit. Has anyone heard about Wallace and Gromit? Seriously folks, who in this world has not ever heard of Wallace and Gromit? It's become a British icon ever since its first short of Grand Day Out. With its short films, a feature length film, lots of merchandise and video games, Wallace and Gromit has become a British icon in the city of Bristol, which is where I live. And I thought I'd review Wallace and Gromit, The Curse of the Rat. Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Were-Rabbit, released in 2005, is a British-American stop-motion animated comedy film made by Ardman Animation Studios and DreamWorks Animation. This movie was released approximately five years after the success of Chicken Run and starred our favourite duo Wallace and Gromit. Now being a big Wallace and Gromit fan, I was all hyped up about this movie. So is it just as good as I remember it from 2005? Well, let's go for the story. Totterton Hall's annual giant vegetable competition is approaching. The winner of the competition will win a gold carrot award. Everyone in the town are eager to protect their vegetables from damage and thievery by rabbits until the contest. And it's at this time of year that Wallace and Gromit start up a new business called Antipesto, a humane pest control. And after they capture the rabbits, they give them a home in the basement. However, they're soon faced with two problems. First one being Wallace's weight, due to his habit of eating cheese. And the second one being running out of space for the captured rabbit. They must be breeding like, well, rabbits. And soon Lady Tottenham, voiced by Helena Bonham Carter, becomes a new client. And at this time, Wallace gets a new idea, using his mind manipulation and matic to brainwash the rabbits by connecting it to the bun back. But after Wallace's experiment goes horribly wrong, surprised, it creates a giant rabbit known as the Were-Rabbit, which is going around everyone's gardens and eating their vegetables of any size. During a chaotic town meeting at the church, Wallace and Gromit enter a rivalry with Lord Victor Quartering, voiced by Ray Fiennes, who seeks to date Lady Tottenham, but the only problem is that his plan to get rid of the rabbit is by a gun. And Lady Tottenham, being a lover of animals, thinks that Wallace and Gromit should be given a chance to capture the rabbit humanely. And so Wallace and Gromit go out to try and capture the Were-Rabbit before the competition starts. And the morning after their first failed attempt at capturing the monster, Wallace and Gromit come to believe that Hutch, the rabbit that was part of Wallace's experiment, is the were-rabbit. So believing they captured the beast, Wallace is overjoyed and informs Lady Totterton of the good news. But after securing Hutch to make sure he doesn't escape, Gromit discovers that the were-rabbit is in fact Wallace. Yeah, that's, that's a big spoiler for like the two of you who haven't seen this movie. And when we finally see Wallace turn into the Were-Rabbit in person, Victor Quartermain sees it as well and sees it as an opportunity to wipe him out and take Lady Totterton and her cash. So the Vicar allows him the use of three 24 carat golden bullets. Get it? And when the day of the competition arrives, Gromit has to try and protect Wallace from the three gold bullets that Victor Quartermain has. And also to try and find a cure for the Were-Rabbit problem. So that's the story in a nutshell. So how does this whole movie hold up? Well, it makes me laugh. Now, if you're the Wallace and Gromit fan like I am, then you'll know that this film stays true to the original, since it was done by the original team. Every Wallace and Gromit short I've ever seen makes me laugh, and this movie doesn't disappoint me. Oh, oh, thanks, Chuck. So let's talk about the characters. Even though everybody knows who Wallace and Gromit is, I'll just go through them briefly before I go through the new characters. Wallace, voiced by Peter Salas, is an absent-minded inventor who is obsessed with cheese. And Gromit, his silent and intelligent dog, always saves his master whenever something goes horribly wrong. The film has a lot of other various actors, such as Liz Smith as Mrs. Mudge, an elderly woman who lives with her husband and is growing a giant pumpkin for the vegetable competition. And the joke with her throughout the entire film is that she's become so attached to her giant pumpkin that she treats it as if it were her baby. There's even a really funny scene where she runs away with it in a baby cot. It's not getting my baby! Comedian Peter Kay voices the police constable who judges the giant vegetable competition. Although, with the havoc it creates each year, he would rather it did not happen at all. And even though he's quite strict and a bit silly when it comes to upholding the law, he does get a lot of funny lines in the film, like this one. If you ask me, this was awesome. Awesome. Aye, someone arsing around. <laughs> and how can we forget the classic? Stand back! 
and famous actress Helena Bonham Carter voices Lady Tottington. Call me Totty. A wealthy aristocrat who's keen on the interest of both growing vegetables and fluffy animals. For over 500 years, her family has hosted the annual giant vegetable competition, and she soon starts to develop a crush on Wallace. And last but not least, the famous actor Rafe Fiennes voices the pompous snob Victor Quartermain, the villain of the film, who's kind of like a posh, upper-class British version of Gaston. No one makes faces in spoons like Gaston. No nonsense with Victor Quartermain. What you see is what you get. No one sounds posh like Victor Quartermain. I say that because I've noticed a lot of similarities between Victor and Gaston as the years have gone by. Like the fact that they're both hunters, the fact that they are quite vain, and the fact that they both want a woman for certain amounts of reasons. But the only difference is, is the reasons why they want to marry a certain woman. In Beauty and the Beast, Gaston wanted to marry Belle just because of her looks, and Victor wanted to marry Tottenham because... We've got to have money. It becomes very clear that Victor only wants to date Lady Totterton and marry her for her fortune. And he's very eager to get his hands on it. But as soon as Wallace comes into the picture and Totterton starts to get a crush on him, Victor sees him as a threat. And as soon as he finds out who the were-rabbit really is, he goes through every attempt he gets using the three gold bullets to shoot Wallace. And you may remember when I reviewed Postman Pat the movie how I said that Edwin Carbuncle was an asshole who just wants money. Victor's another one of those characters who just wants money, but in a very entertaining way. I mean, every time Victor shows up on screen, I can't help laughing at his shenanigans. Especially when he goes to see the vicar about the beast and how to kill it. A bullet? Well, we're waiting. A pure gold. <laughs> How can you not die laughing at this scene? I also love how his dog, Philip, is supposed to be a mean, tough dog, but then gets really cowardly when he sees Wallace turn into the were-rabbit. And it's especially hilarious how he gets out a girl's purse. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how many big, tough dogs end up having purses that are for girls? <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. Seeing this movie back in 2005, I loved it back then. I'm watching it again today, I still love it. This movie was critically and commercially successful, and won a number of film awards, including the Academy Award for Best Animated Film, making it the second film from DreamWorks Animation to win, after Shrek. This movie entertained me back in 2005, and it still entertains me to this day. Now if you're someone who's never seen Wallace and Gromit before and wants to get into it, I'd say start with the short films first, and then work your way to the movie. It'll be worth it. So if you're in the mood for plasticine animation, Wallace and Gromit, and comedy, then definitely check out this movie. It's a great film to add to your collection, especially if you're a fan of Aardman and Wallace and Gromit. So get out there and go see it if you haven't seen it already. And if you've seen it before, put it on a couple more times. You'll get loads of laughs out of it. I'm Dark44, and now I'm going to watch Wallace and Gromit The Curse of the Rabbit whilst eating my big jar of Skittles. <laughs> <laughs>